This week, I'm going to revisit one of my favorite cakes. I know for a fact that people love to see cakes that replicate their favorite foods, but let's not forget about people's favorite drinks. So I'm gonna use this revisit to explain to you how to make those types of cakes. And leave a comment below and let me know what your cake project would be. Would it be a Starbucks cup? Is it a McDonald's cup? What else is there? What else is there? We're missing something big. For this Tim Hortons cup, the first thing I did is bake five round cakes. I know how much batter goes in my pans. I know how tall they are approximately once I level them and remove the caramelization from the bottom. And then I have to think in my head, how many of those layers do I need to get to the height that the cup is? And also factor in that there will be filling in between. But you definitely want a cup in front of you. This is really, really gonna help you with the process because whenever I make a cake like this, I measure, I measure again, and I re-measure. If you wanna enlarge the cup, then you have to make sure to multiply all those measurements by the same number. For this cake, I decided to bake my ultimate vanilla cakes, but I made a coffee simple syrup, and then my favorite, coffee buttercream. It's my all-time favorite. I like it with chocolate cake, but it's also very good with vanilla cake. Even though novelty cakes are very restrictive in the sense that you don't have as much freedom as you do with regular cakes, I do try to impart flavor anytime I can if it goes with the theme of the cake. So obviously this is a Tim Hortons coffee cup, so I want some coffee in this cake. The general rule for cake decorating is once a cake gets to four to six inches tall, this is where you wanna start having dowels and a board between. So technically, it's like you're building two cakes, but from the outside, it looks like one. And this is just for support, and it also makes life easier when you're cutting a cake of this nature. In the case of this cake, what I did is I made sure that the bottom layers were thicker than the top layers. There's a reason this works for the structure, and it's because the more buttercream that that's in a cake or the thinner the cake layers. Once this cake warms up and comes to room temperature, uh, it's gonna feel the weight of itself. So a thicker layer on the bottom is gonna be stronger than thinner layers. But if you were making this for a client or to take to a party and you had to transport the cake, you would definitely wanna put a board and dowels in a cake like this. Do you remember when I built the, um, I wanna say it was the Starbucks salted caramel inspired mega cake? And it started to feel its weight and we could see it. Do you remember? and then I flipped it over, removed some cake. So I'm trying to avoid that because in the world of novelty cakes, it's just a disaster when a cake starts to fall apart, especially if you've already put fondant on it. I'm mad at myself because I got cocky. Like I told myself I could put six layers in this cake and I knew better, it's too small. I didn't put a board. There it is. I had to shove sprinkles up against it. No, because it was falling over, Orhan. Man, these revisits are serious. It's mm. not, look at me, I made a cake, it's so much fun. It's like, it can collapse in the bridge. <laughs> it is serious. Do you remember when I made the Valentine's Day mailbox cake? And I oh, filled it, it was going to burst. And I filled it with like cinnamon hearts and they were just pushing the walls of the cake. And then I made a girdle. The hardest part about being a cake decorator is having a plan B in your head, knowing how to think quick and solve the problem because standing and looking at it and saying <laughs> it's falling apart, it will not do anything for you. You have to work quickly. But yeah, cake decorating is serious, Orhan. You should know this, but you've seen my tears, Orhan. You just edit, you see them live, you edit them out. What do you <laughs> what are you talking about? So now it's time to carve this into the shape of a cup and we're gonna make sure that right now while the cake is technically upside down, the top of it is going to be the smallest diameter and then as it goes down, it's going to be wider. So what we're doing is we're cutting from top to bottom in an A line, you know, like the letter A. In order to stay on track on top, I always like to place something on top that is the right diameter. A bowl or a plate or a cup or a circle cutter. And then you can use a sharp serrated knife and cut all the way around. I wish I had something round. You can, this, that's actually great. This is just like a cake. Okay, you don't wanna make big cuts. You wanna focus on cutting away like about an inch and then go around go around and overlap those cuts and that will keep it rounded. You're not trying to make, you know, an octagon. In all honesty, I think this is 
an easier... Don't you dare say this is a beginner cake. It's not a beginner cake, but out of all the things that you could carve, it's very symmetrical. Uh, essentially, you're carving one angle all the way around. So once you're happy with the shape of your cake, you can crumb coat it. And once you crumb coat, you want to chill until that buttercream is set. And you can tell when you put your finger on it and nothing comes off. You know, looking at this cake, I still think there's one side of it that's a bit... Mm. Yeah. It might be the way that, you that It shot. could be the way you... <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I You're like, I'm gonna it say it yeah. before. Now that the crumb coat is chilled, you can ice your cake. And again, you wanna make sure it's really, really straight. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> this won't stay on my head. <laughs> it's very challenging. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right, now comes the fun part when you can decorate your cake. Use a fabric measuring tape, measure the circumference. In this case, it's most important that you're measuring the circumference of the bottom since it is the widest part. And then you're going to measure the height. And now you're going to roll out your fondant a little longer than it needs to be to go all the way around and a little higher than it needs to be. While you're rolling it up, with every roll, brush away the excess icing sugar so you're not getting it on what is the front surface of the fondant. And now we're gonna carefully pick that up, line it up against the cake. You want to make sure that the buttercream on your cake at this point is not so cold that it feels dry. You wanna know that the fondant is gonna stick. Now we're gonna unravel this fondant around the cake. You wanna make sure the fondant is hitting the base board. And as you unravel, use your other hand to press it up against the cake and make sure that it's sticking. Uh, Life-size cup, this is really a lot simpler. This size cup, it's okay, but the Wendy's cup, this was such a chore because the fondant is so heavy that I could barely even hold it in one hand and make sure it was sticking. And then at the back where the fondant overlaps itself, you want to take a ruler, cut a nice clean line that goes through both layers of fondant, remove the excess and then join up the line. Down at the bottom of the cup, you want to push in any excess if, and then use a sharp paring knife to cut away the excess and kind of angle your knife a bit since your cake is on an angle. And then at the top, you're going to hold your knife flush to that cake board, turn your Lazy Susan and cut away the excess fondant. Yeah, I hope you're visualizing what cup you're gonna make. There's probably so many fast food places like we don't even have here. So tell us what your cup would be. What's your cup of cake? You know when you say, what's your cup of tea? What's your cup of cake? Don't you think this could be a whole TV show? What cup of cake? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We're getting to the most fun part of this cake. The lid. Yeah, see, here's where you've got to get smart, guys. If you're making a cake like this, I would suggest doing it more like my pumpkin spice latte cake or the Wendy's cup, not as big, where the cup is just open and filled with something. Because filling a cake with like a frothy or whipped cream is easier than creating a lid. I had to cut out that whole pattern and the letters to recreate it. When you were doing this and I was shooting, I was in complete disbelief. <laughs> I just, it was my first time meeting you. Oh my God, it was! Yeah, it was my first time meeting you. In real life! So I was thinking like, she probably has like a way of like, I'm just like, let me get my Tim Hortons yeah. cup lid uh, uh, imprinter. No. Nope. It's a famous chain, so I have to make the font exact. I couldn't just use letter cutters that I had. So I had to make a little template and then cut it out with an exact. Yeah, pick an easier cup. Either come up with your own logo, or it's the perfect way to personalize a cake, which you know I'm a big fan of. So you can write, you know, someone's name on it, or call it whatever you want. So I'm seeing that you also made timbits. These are Tim bots. In America, they call them donut holes. I just made uh, little half sphere cakes that 
together form a ball. And then I filled them, glued them together, and I had a lot of fun Timbits come in different flavors, like some are just glazed, some are rolled in coconut, some are rolled in sprinkles, some are rolled in, um, doesn't Justin Bieber have, what are his bits called? Beep, beep bits? What are they called? I hope you guys enjoyed this revisit. I hope I've encouraged you to cake your own cup. And if you cake a cup, post it and tag me because I want to see it. I think we can make this a TV show. Let's see how, <laughs> let's see how this goes. Okay, let's see how Look out, Survivor. Out. Is Survivor still on? <laughs> well, not anymore after this. <laughs> We're going to annihilate you. So you won't survive this show. Um, and I will see you all next week.